so there's an interesting community developing across Tasmania and uh, there's a, a community of practice growing, people that work across all sorts of different organisations coming together on a voluntary basis to meet and bring some of their workplace issues perhaps uh, and and work through some of those using a range of processes and, and reviewing some of the processes that they've learned as well. Anywhere from Department of Health, uh, prison, police, ambulance, uh, child safety, all of those kind of organisations, yeah. So, and how many people in the community practice? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I actually don't know. I'm going to guess and say a couple of hundred. Uh, I would expect them probably in the order of about 40 at a time, mm-hmm. 30 to 40 maybe. Mm. Wow. So how did you get them all so excited? What What did you do that's, um, that's brought them together like that? Uh, I think think uh, mostly it's around their stories of using what they've learned in the workplace and recognising the benefit that that's, that's provided. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, some someone we worked with recently made the comment that they'd done a university degree in leading teams, uh, but it didn't actually change anything to do with how they engaged in their practice in work. And yet uh, doing a few days of training with us, it transformed so many so many areas of what they did, you know, that they're, they're operating very differently now. And so to mm-hmm. recognize that they just wanted to continue the learning process. And I think so many people are like that, I guess, in quite a few organizations, and this is, this is pretty typical in frontline organizations, there tends to be, uh, managers tend to take on in general, more of a, more of a command and control approach, or more of a directive approach, uh, and need to be the, the problem solver in a range of situations, and to learn clean language and to ask the question what would you like to have happen and uh and what what kind of and anything else about and recognize how uh i guess in many cases a manager liberating that is uh because you open up to the other person uh to invite them in to have that conversation rather than being the one that has to come up with a solution Mm -hmm. especially if the solution is your solution to their situation which is probably not going to work anyway we often spend time with individuals and groups, getting them to consider that the context that they're in and and using that to guide what kind of response is needed. So there are situations such as a crisis response where command and control is a perfect approach. It's what it's usually what's needed. Uh, but the important factor is to work out when you need to step back out of that role into perhaps a, an in, inquiring role and to be able to recognise when the context shifts in order to do that. Mm. So that there's a subtle shift sort of out of the immediate emergency and into the next stage. Absolutely. Yeah. And and does clean help at all at that point in helping people to understand that 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 shift? Uh clean questions often do. Uh, because in that shift, it often requires you to become a little bit more experimental. Uh, and to to gather information and to be taking steps, working out you know what's happening as you go, and so asking asking clean questions opens that right up. You can um, uh, that it's a way of becoming much more exploratory. Mm-hmm. So and, for and ex- for example, experimental. Tell, uh, for, give me an example. Uh, for example, um, uh, I, I use a safety example. So if you are if you are in police and you're being directive, you might ask someone to focus on traffic safety. And if you if you then went to a questioning mode, uh, you could ask how is traffic safety, or what's happening with traffic safety. Uh, but what you've done is you've taken a, a lens and you've narrowed it right into a really really tight beam, and it doesn't necessarily um, it doesn't always help for the complexity that might be appearing at that moment as you move away from chaos. And so to be able to open that beam right up with a question like, is there anything else about safety that we need to know? You notice that opens the beam right up. Uh, mm-hmm. And and the person now has permission to be able to consider safety much more broadly uh, and report back rather than just focusing only on traffic safety. I, I think recognising what you're doing with those questions and what that does for the beam is important. So there's a relationship between that. I think of the questions as having a function. And so what are you doing with your question? What function are you performing with that question? Is that what you actually want? Because uh, then that determines what you're doing with that beam. How come you have been successful in building this 
group well, not only in in finding finding the work finding people to teach this stuff to but also in building the community of practice what a bit what are the what are the steps that that seem to you to work oh uh i probably break it down into three parts so uh the first part's context uh in tasmania if you think about the size of tasmania it's it's large enough to uh, have sufficient diversity and complexity to work with, uh, but sufficiently small enough for it to be connected enough that that you can work with those connections and you can um, you can enhance them, move them around, work with them. Uh, it you know we I think there's uh, half a million people in Tasmania, so it's not a it's not you're not talking millions of people. Uh, so that there's something about that size that seems to be. Um, seems to be useful from a systemic perspective um the the second aspect i i guess might be um the the people involved uh so um people who are who really want to work with support others uh and so the people that we work with we're pretty um uh specific about uh you know they need to be able to demonstrate those kind of characteristics uh, and uh, and the third part, I guess, is the material that we we work with. And Clean is a really great example of the kind of material that allows you to work with others in a way that uh, uniquely supports them, rather than a typical training kind of environment where you're imposing on other people. And uh, for most of the people that we work with, it's uniquely or it's sufficiently different, uh, and they recognise that, and they and 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 they want to be a part of that they recognize its value if you think about uh networks of leaders for example uh there's not necessarily those those uh communities of leaders that are interacting and uh openly discussing some of the challenges around leading teams for example we actually do use clean in a, in a pretty wide range of applications um we don't describe what we do as therapy um, we're not therapists um, but in a coaching context that supported with other medical professionals, um, we do from time to time work um, with uh, depression, trauma, anxiety, um, those kind of responses. Mm. Mm-hmm. And in, in the coaching space and supported by other medical professionals. That's right. Yeah. Mm. I think that's one of the the re- real strengths of clean coaching is that stuff can come up and it's OK for it to come up. Because I'm sure that in frontline services, as in the military and a bunch of other very specific spaces, trauma is pretty much part of part of what you get. Absolutely, yeah. And um, and you know, most of the people that we work with, there'll be some aspects of trauma within the system anyway. Uh, so so you you know, even when you don't think you're working with it, you kind of are. In in a coaching context, if you're managing. If you're managing risk appropriately, and it does require some specific skills, um, if you're managing mm-hmm. risk appropriately and you're mindful of the supportive community that might be needed around a person, and that you're you're um, restricting yourself to to coaching process in a way that's supportive, um, then what you do in coaching, particularly in clean, uh, is is relatively safe actually. Uh, in that context, you're not asking someone to re-experience a traumatic event. Uh, you're not you're not going to some of those places that most people have quite a bit of psychological training for. Um, you're approaching it differently, and you're offering them options or choice in what they're mm-hmm. doing. 